Hello, my friends. This is Eric with One Number, and in this week's Tableau video, I want to dive into how does Tableau think about date fields and why are they sometimes blue and sometimes green? Uh, so let's go ahead and, and dive into that. So first up, let's talk about the greenies. Um, so date values. Um, got a little display there, a little month of date and a green pill. So other than being green, what are these things? What's going on? What are they used for? Um, so first of all, something to know about date values is that they're typically plotted against a continuous axis, which means that they're really good for displaying chronological progress. So if you want to show how values trended from the beginning to the end of a range, um, especially if it's a multi-year uh, situation, that's where date values can be really helpful. And the way that I think about how they're displayed is that they are specific dates. So if you picked month, it would say like May 2019, okay? So just to show you some of the data that we're gonna be working with in these examples, I've just got a quick table here pulled up, which will run you through. So right now it's like February 2019. It's nearly uh, daily values. Occasionally there's days where there's no transactions, but it basically runs through February 2023. Okay, so let's say that I want to answer this question at the top of this line graph, uh, graph, which it says, what is our monthly sales trend across all years? Well, going back to our list of dates, we know that we've got like four different years worth of data. Um, so there's probably going to be a lot of months, you know, four years, 12 months, 48-ish months, something of that nature. So if I flip forward to this graph here, let's go ahead and start by grabbing our sales field and dropping this on our row shelf. So currently I've just got a singular bar showing me that there's like $2.3 million in sales ever. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my date fields. This one is called order date, and I'm gonna drop that on the column shelf, okay? So when I do that, Tableau defaults to what is called date part year. And that's just what Tableau does with date fields. So you'll notice that the pill is blue and it says year at the beginning. And now I've just got this line graph, which is showing me my yearly sales trend that's okay, it's not the end of the world, but it's not really what we're going for, right? So what I'm gonna do is hit this drop down here, and instead of having date part year selected, I'm gonna choose date value month. I'm gonna give you an image here in a few minutes which actually shows you what I'm gonna sketch on top of this right now, but just so that you know, this section up here at the top from, this starts with year and then goes all the way through the first more breakout, these are date parts. And then this section down here, where it starts with year once again, these are date values, okay? So right now, we want to have a unique section of a line graph, or a unique data point, I should say, for every month and year. So I like this format, May 2015, better than this format, where it's just the month name, May. So we hit this drop down, and we're gonna choose that one, date value month, Right, and now you can see a nice line graph. If I check out my status bar, I can see I've got 49 marks, um, which is good. That's what we wanna see, right? Four years and 12 months per year. So we've got this nice chronological line graph from start to finish, okay? Um, so we're gonna come back to this in a minute, um, but let's go ahead and see what would have happened if we'd chosen date part month, okay? So date parts, a little bit different. Uh, those pills are blue. Um, a couple things that are unique about them, when the values are plotted, they aren't plotted against an axis necessarily, they're plotted against individualized discrete labels. Um, and if you wanna check it out, I'm gonna put a link in the description to a discrete versus continuous video that my colleague Ollie did, which will help explain the difference between those concepts and Tableau. They're pretty tied to date parts and date values. Um, so it might be, might be worth checking out if you're like, what are we talking about? That's the first time I've heard of that, okay? Uh, the date format for date parts, I like to call them aggregated dates, meaning that if you choose month, it's more just like a date name or a month name. So it would just say May, June. Um, so what are date parts good for? Um, they're nice for comparative analysis, like, hey, how did this year compare to last year? Um, they're great for highlight tables and text tables. So we'll dive into a couple examples of each of those. And hey, Right before we do that, by the way, if you want to check it out, we have some classes coming up. Um, we have a Mystery to Mastery 1 Tableau class coming up in just a few weeks here. Um, you can check it out in that link up here in the corner. Uh, we go through a lot of fundamental concepts like dates, amongst other things, calculations, dashboards, all that good stuff. So if you want to check that out, we would love to have you. You can find that in that link up there. Okay, so that said, let's build a little date part graph. So here's the type of question which a date part month might help us wish. 
with. Uh, which months have we historically had the most sales? So I'm gonna start this off the same. I'll throw sales on my row shelf. Except for this time around, we put order date on our column shelf, but instead of choosing date value month, May 2015, I'm just gonna choose date part month where it just says May as our example. Okay, so, so what are we seeing here, right? So this line graph definitely has fewer data points than the other line graph, right? So in this case, we've just got 12 marks showing up, 12 months, 12 marks. So Tableau doesn't really care that there are, um, you know, multiple years worth of data. Let me switch this to a bar graph to make it a little more obvious. So here we can see that, you know, all of the February and all of the March values are just rolled up together. So we can see that historically we seem to do really well in January. So who knows, maybe we sell like skis and snowboards or something, right? Um, and then we kind of drop off in the springtime, okay, before we start to see a little bit of March toward the winter again. So it's kind of interesting, right? So very different than what we were seeing in our line graph where we had an individualized data point. Let me switch that to a bar so you can see it. Where we had an individual data point for every January and every February. Here, it's just all the Januarys added together. Okay, so what are some other reasons that you might wanna use date parts, right? So here's another one. Like what if you wanted to compare monthly sales of one year to the next year? So how did 2021 compare to 2022? So same thing from the beginning. I'm gonna do sales on rows. I'm gonna do order date on columns. I'm gonna choose date part months. Um, oh, I chose date value. Look, I've been doing this for years. Even I messed that up. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to put year of order date on color. So I get an individual colored line graph uh, for every year. And this looks pretty horrible, right? Uh, we got our spaghetti noodle mess going for sure. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is just drop a copy of order date on filters and just filter this down to the years and then just choose 2021 and 2022 from that list. Okay. Um, side note, if you want to see more about filters and specifically date filters, I'll drop a link in the description to a video that we did that talks about filters and pretty much all their entirety in Tableau. Okay, uh, cool. So what do we see here? Well, I think that typically we sold more in 2022 than 2021, but not always, right? There were uh, maybe one or two bright spots for 2021 where uh, we seem to edge out the 2022 values. So a little chaotic, kind of a lot going on there, but that's another thing that date parts could be helpful with. Let's look at one more. So which months typically have the most sales, right? So it's a little bit hard in like a continuous line graph, like our date value to be able to see like, hey, how are the Januaries doing, right? They're all kind of broken out. Like I could maybe try and color them or something, but honestly, it'd probably get kind of crazy. So that's where maybe a text table or a highlight table could be helpful, right? So in this case, check this out. I wanna, okay, which months have the most sales? I'm gonna throw sales on text. I'm gonna throw a year of order date on columns. And then I'm going to put another copy of order date on rows, except for this one, I'm going to change it to date part month. Right, so now I get this nice text table where I can just see all of the values laid out in a more or less like a calendar format, right? Uh, right now we have very minimal pre-attentive attributes helping us identify patterns and outliers. So let's mix that up. Let's turn this into a highlight table, two moves. We just change our mark type to square and I'll throw a copy of sales on color. And now, you know, where are we seeing those darkest values? Uh, January, it seems like, right? I mean, definitely the darkest overall value is January 23. The lowest overall value is February 2019. And then we can see it seems like, you know, usually a little darker down at the bottom than maybe it is at the top with the exception of January. Okay. Uh, cool. So that's kind of interesting and helpful, right? And this is something made possible by date parts, again, because date parts give us labels. If I had chosen date value month here, it tries to plot all those months against an axis and then it breaks them up and you don't get that nice table that's all compact. Uh, you can see the pill turned green. So no, 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 we wanna switch that back to date part months. Okay, so let's take a minute to review what we just talked about and we'll look at one more example so that hopefully you're like, oh, okay, I kinda of get it. I need to see it one more time. Let's do that. Okay, first of all, date values versus date parts. I told you this graphic was coming up. Also, this workbook, you can access this in the link in the description. So if you wanna download this for yourself, maybe be able to review it, save the images, whatever, uh, then you can do that, okay? So let's do the same thing we just did, but with quarters instead of months, just to see how that would do. So for date value, let's say I wanna see sales by quarter. 
So sales goes to our row shelf. Again, we've got, you know, four years worth of data. So four quarters a year, four years should be roughly 16 values. So I hit the drop down date value quarter right here. All right. Um, so you can see, cool. Like it seems like our quarterly sales are typically on the rise, uh, which is awesome. And then sales by date part quarter, right? This is going to be more of a seasonal comparison. So if we did something like sales on rows, and then if I'd put order date on columns and swap this out for date part quarter, I can see that here, we've just got the four values for the four quarters. So we can see Q1 and Q4 definitely team up to sell much more in general than Q2 and Q3. So, you know, the same kind of principles that we saw with months also applies with quarters, okay? Um, one more trick that I'll teach you, you can save this for later if you're not quite ready for it yet, but one thing that I like to do and might be helpful for you once you start to become more experienced with using dates in Tableau is actually if you right click and drag a date field into a worksheet instead of the left click and drag, I right click and drag order date to my column shelf, Tableau pulls up this nice menu for you and just gives you all these options right off the bat. Some of them aren't super easily accessible from that regular menu that we've been using up until now. So this is gonna look horrible, but bear with me. Like for instance, month, day, year is a good example of that. Like it is possible to get to that from that other menu, but it's a little tricky. So if I choose month, day, year, oh, I see, it doesn't look so bad because it's a huge scroll bar. But, uh, you know, basically this is some sort of like daily sales broken out, you know, label by label here. So not actually really a great visual, but just giving you an idea of how you could use that right click and drag. And what's nice about that is unlike that other menu that we saw, it's also color coded, right? You got your blue date parts, you got your green date values. Um, so that's just nice because colors are helpful, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of leave you with this table for review. So if you wanna kind of check that out, pause it on this thumbnail, then you can. Just does a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. What are the differences of colors? What are the differences of some of the use cases? Um, so if you wanna check out some of those, then you can. So thank you so much for joining us on this voyage uh, where we got to talk about dates and Tableau. Um, we put videos like this out every week. So we look forward to catching you at another one here soon. And... Talk to you then. Thanks.